alongside X Games Real Snow medalist Craig McMorris in the booth. And Craig, this event has given us some of the most iconic moments in X Games history. It's just built up. You mentioned it right off the top, the world's best. When the world's best are going head to head, that brings up some big storylines and some big moments, Brando. Look at the storylines today. No gold since 09. That's a US drought. Marcus Cleveland, two X Games gold medals in Slopestyle. And how about Darcy Sharp, our defending gold medalist from X Games Aspen, who also earned a bronze in big air last night. So he's got some momentum. There we see Marcus Cleveland making his return here to the slope style course. Darcy Sharp though, seeing things seem to be clicking for Darcy this season. Needs to qu clean the windshield though a little bit. You can see it is raining and uh, the cameraman cleaning his wheel sh windshield, Mark McMorris cleaning his windshield too. And he's looking out the eyes of the most successful X Games athlete on the winter side. That was the goat you saw right there, Mark McMorris. But Sven Torgren, who could forget that gold medal from a couple of years ago here at X Games Norway. And then in Aspen, as we said, Darcy Sharp wasn't necessarily a guy that we thought was going to win that event, but boy, were we wrong taking home gold. This new format, the format change has really played into the hands of the Darcy Sharp because he can go down this course and do four, five completely different runs and that is what has been rewarded from this format change, Brando, and I like it. I like the change. Well, we'll get to the format, but how about this course, Greg? It is huge. It's huge. The rails are very, very big, and uh, you can see the rain coming down. That'll affect the eight athletes we have in the contest today. Obviously, Brandon, a 32-minute jam session, and as mentioning, overall impression. That's that format. That's that jam session that we know and love now. Household names one through eight here. As we said, Darcy Sharp, our defending gold medal, so he'll be the last rider to drop in. And of course, Norway's own Stale Sandbeck will be kicking things off here on this course at Hafjell. X Games Norway, Monster Energy, Men's Snowboard, Slope Style Final. Enough talking about it, let's be about it. Stale, kick us off. Zombek trying to add to his five X Games medals. He's got two silvers and a bronze in slope. Never a gold. Does that change here today? Well, home soil. This course is suited to him. This format is suited to him. He's got the tricks. Can he put it down? And there's a great look at that rain coming down, Brando. It is, uh, it's raining. It's going right. How much is that going to affect the approach, particularly on these rails, Craig? Well, what it's going to do on the rail section is make the run-ins and landings a little bit bumpy. You'll see a bit of a washboard effect from riders breaking after the rail. It will also change the speed of the jumps. So in the past few days practice, that speed is going to be thrown out the window. You're going to have to really judge it as you're coming in, which is extremely difficult to do. The rails thus far for Sandbeck, great! Goes yard on a backside 1260 on our first of two jumps, Brando. Coming to this one, switch. Cap 12, cap 14. Add a 180 to that 1260, and you got Estale Sandbeck full pull. Now, Brandon Estale's got his entire family. Brother, sister, brother's kids, you know? The nephews. Nephews and nieces watching on. Estale Sandbeck puts down that cap 1440. Good to see a strong run out of Stale. Wasn't his day in big air yesterday, but comes correct right out the gate. And Rene Renekongas, sweet embrace there before he drops in for his first run. Magical embrace, if you will, with Sven Torgren. A slope style silver he won back in 2019, trying to get back on the podium for the first time since then. We'll switch nose press front side 180 out on that first rail. The thing about Renee, you never know what you're gonna get with that rail run. And you can see that washboard effect almost loses it there coming in the switch heels under the hitching post and up onto that big down bar. Now, hits per run 
Nobody's beating Renee. He's tagged everything. He's touching steel. He's touching quarter pipe. He's going to catch some air right here. Switch, double backside rodeo. Switch, tail grab 900. That's a mouthful. But he makes it look easy. Okay, Renee. All right. They're good. That's how you want to do it, eh? Stalle Sandbeck, full pull. Rene Renaconga says, I see you and I raise you with another full pull. T to B for the young Finn. Lot to like on that run. As you said, he the leader when it comes to the hit list leaderboard. That's true. He the leader, and I think he will bounce above Stalle Sandbeck as we get started. Note on the scores, there will not be a score. It's all just ranking. No scores after the runs, live rankings in real time. You'll see as the judges react and think about every run in this contest. But here's Marcus Cleveland really making his triumphant return to the slope style stage for the first time since 2018, Craig, here at X Games. The reason being, an absolutely shattered kneecap. It looked like a discarded puzzle. There was pieces everywhere, and that injury to come back from is so very difficult, but I appreciate the patience that Marcus Cleveland has shown in his career. It could be easy just to get back out there and start dropping back triples, but you can re-injure yourself. He has waited, and the weight has paid off. Her patience is a virtue, Brando, and Marcus Cleveland has it in spades. What a run from the young Norwegian. It's in his DNA. He is Patience? as talented oh, okay. as any rider here. Now he's healthy. He's 20 years old. He's won this event twice before. At 20 years old, he just possesses that veteran mindset that, that just all the greats have, you know? So Marcus Cleveland, no surprise, taking over the top spot. Max Perot, this is his 13th X Games. He's got 12 medals. 10 of those are in big air. He has won slope style before. He did it back in 2014, though. Took a silver medal in big air last night. Going way on the outside here. Under the hitching post. Front blunt, 270 off. You see him wipe the goggles. Because as I mentioned, it's raining, but that does not affect that big gap backside 360 into the back lip. Now change it up from practice. He was going cab 12 on that jump, but wasn't really getting it around. So I like that approach. Puts the backside 1260 in its place. Puts the cab triple 16 on the bottom jump. A hand touch, but a hand clap because he's ecstatic with that as am I. You can tell by the tone of my voice. Does the hand clap? cancel out the hand touch. I think he's given a high five to the landing and he's given a high five to himself because he just landed a cab triple 16, 20. That's hard to do, ladies and gentlemen. A lot of high fives, a lot of smiles yeah. out here at X Games <laughs> Norway. Max Perot taking over first place. And we got ourselves a contest, Craig. Sven Torgren. He has won this event before. Six X Games medals. Well, cab 180 on, 360 off. This rail section really allows the riders to choose their own line. That was one of the things we saw on Tom when we were talking to Tom Z, because we didn't see, we heard it. On the women's side, a lot of the women were taking very similar lines, and, and Jamie Anderson, who was doing something different, was being very well rewarded. So I think the guys that are taking the most unique lines will be rewarded here today. A choose-your-own-adventure. Absolutely. Cab 12 on that first of two jumps, and I'm thinking something backside. A lot of Svenergy on that takeoff. Oh, my goodness. There's no landing there. I don't know how he is still on a snowboard. He went all the way down. Yeah, we talked about it before, the Svenergy. That, that's that's the only way you can or describe the sort of frenetic pace and the way he looks, particularly in the air. No one quite likes Sven Thorgren. And the ability to land. Look at how... Boom! That's a lot of impact, but... Sven's got strong legs. And Sven taking over first place. Just musical chairs here on run one, Craig. Five for five. Are you kidding me? And here's Mons Roisland. 
Again, going with that taxi cab confessional kit. I love the uh, the black and yellow. Yeah. Ooh, nice Miller flip. I mentioned before, if you're doing something unique, you're doing something different, you're gonna stand out just like that yellow on his pants. Little switch up there on that down bar. Ooh, almost lost it on that down rail there for Mons Roisland, that cab 180 in, backside 360 out. But hey, switch back 12, forget about it. Then does he go backside triple? I think he does, and I think he puts it down. So good, so good. Lest we forget our silver medalist from Slopestyle and X Games Aspen, much like his fellow countryman, other Norwegian, Stale Sandbeck, has had success finding the podium in this event, though has not won gold. Has not won gold. It is one of the most elusive medals to win, that Slopestyle gold medal. You have to be so good all day long. No mistakes, and Mons Roisland does not make a mistake on his first run. Mons jumping up into second place. Mark McMorris becoming the winningest winter athlete of all time in X Games history with that gold medal in Big Air yesterday, giving him 19 total. A gold today, though, could pass Sean White once again for six overall in slope style. That's a goal. That's a lot of gold. He could pass Sean White twice over this well, weekend. What I like about it is if the stock market crashes, he's still got something to lean back Always on. Always invest yeah. in gold. <laughs> Never goes bad. Please do not listen to us for any investing advice. Well, tough to say. Whipping that switch backside 1260 around and that up and over jump. It never looks like the athlete is very high above the knuckle, but they are going very quick. Seven for seven? Are you kidding me, ladies and gentlemen? This slope style final is going Hoff. Deal. We're in Hoffield. I see what you did there. Mark McMorris picking up where he left off in big air. He was a perfect five for five in his runs yesterday. And this is just a walk in the park for little brother Sparky as he just seems so determined. We've talked about it. Hasn't necessarily had the competitive season that he was hoping for, but X Games Norway, he's looking like the true king that he is. And then rounding out our group of eight here for run number one, he won his first X Games gold just a few weeks ago in Aspen, Darcy Sharp. It's contagious. You get a little taste of that medal and you believe in yourself. You start riding with the confidence that you didn't know you had, and that confidence I am seeing in Darcy Sharp. Even forced him to grow a mustache. You think you won gold? He goes, well, I guess this is what I have this to do is now. I've become a man now. This is my life now. <laughs> <laughs> and I love the mustache, don't get me wrong. I love it, wow. Cab over two, pull back on that down flat down into the board slide, same way. You said it, I've said it, tech over everything. And off the toes, Aye. he wanted that front 10 nose, but my nose knows you need a lot of pop if you want to bring that around. Lest we forget, Darcy earning a bronze medal in big air last night. Now, this is very, very interesting here because we talked about that jam session, that overall impression. And there's two approaches. Do you just do, you know, 80% runs throughout the entirety or you go 100% for maybe two runs, allow yourself some falls? We've seen almost the entirety of the field except for Darcy Sharp put down that first run. So does Stale Sandbeck swing for the fences here? Stale Sandbeck now sitting in sixth place at a very good first run. How does he shake things up? and try to jump up in the standings here on his second attempt. Well, already shaking things up on that first rail, that little cap to pop into the bank. And the only snowboarder I've seen take that spider rail up and then down. Everybody's either going pole jam or ducking under the post and hitting that down rail. So very unique line. Craig, by the way, I have it double confirmed that you did not coin the term spider rail. Many people have been calling that here. And I just refuse to believe you. You're a stubborn man. I am, and I'm 
and I refuse to believe Stalley didn't land that that double front flip right there, or back seven double. We actually saw Sion Clivedale put that down in the knuckle huck, and that is a very, very awkward, delicate rotation to keep it at just a 720 or double front flip. I still have yet to decide what you truly call that. Well, our next rider to drop in is a guy who will be part of Real Snow coming soon, along with our own very Craig McMorris. Let's check out our Monster Energy profile on Rene Renacongas. I'm Rene Renacongas. I'm 20 years old, and I'm a snowboarder. Mixing up filming streets and uh, doing contests might be a little little hard and uh, hectic sometimes, but I think there's too many cool things going on that I don't want to miss. Now we've been filming for The Real Snow for a while, and uh, we're going to take a little pause from filming and go to the U.S. for the main event in, in Aspen. Can bump himself up into the podium conversation. It feels pretty unreal to be able to ride with all the rock stars that I've always been watching from TV and be a part of that side of snowboarding. So it, it's amazing. I'll come back here for one week and get the last day for the real snow. Then we're pretty much done. I'm just too stoked to have the chance to do all this and uh, just ride everything. Rene Renacongas, he's, he's like the young guy in the crew that everybody loves and wants to do everything with everyone. And he really does. If there's a snowboarding event at a contest, chances are Rene Renacongas is a competitor. He's in everything. He does everything. I couldn't have said it any better. And he does everything well. Right. That's the other thing. He's always in contention. Could be a pipe contest, could be a rail jam, could be an X game slope style final like he finds himself here today. Oh. So right now, Rene Renacongas needs to clean some things up here as he's sitting in seventh place. And not lack of, you know, skill. He landed his first run. Or Every amount of tricks, yeah, for that matter. Everybody else landed their first run, too. Wild start to the final. He went switch double back rodeo on this jump last time, changed it up with that cab double 12, muscles it around. And backside, ooh. 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 The knuckle was just, it's just rude sometimes. Doesn't think of others. Remember, we're not that far removed from when he made his X Games Aspen debut, and it looked like he was going to potentially win this event. It took Mark McMorris putting down an all-time run at the very end, but but Rene Renacongas has been oh so close to winning this contest. You can't get any closer than that. Marcus Cleveland, shockingly, after that first run, it's crazy that he's in fifth right now. It's also crazy that he just did a backside 720 over that first rail. But that's what Marcus Cleveland brings to this. Saw him in Knucklehuck last night. The gold. Went gold last night. He went gold last night. And he was doing tricks that were just mind melting, but gets a little hung up in between those two rails there. You see that revert detrimental to his full run, but can't say it enough. You got to keep going. You got to keep building that body of work. It's a jam session, and you're judged on everything, not just your best run. And Marcus understanding that philosophy. Just keep going. Like Future says, never stop. Never stop. Keep, keep going. going. <laughs> so let's take another look at where it just goes wrong for Marcus. Back seven over that first rail, definitely a highlight for me, and then fell on the rail just previous right. to this jump. So he goes backside three and then floats a front side three on that last jump. You hear the Marcus chance. You think he's got a home course advantage out here today? I would, I would say so. So here's Max Perot currently sitting in third. He's a tactician. He understands the strategy as well as anyone in this field. Had a fantastic first run. Banger to end it. How does he change it up here on Tr run number two? He tries to change it on that 
hitching post to down bar with the front blunt for 50 out. Didn't really bring it around, so he kind of landed a little bit 90-ish. Lost a little bit of speed, but makes up for it on this jump here. Big cab 12. And then he's gonna go backside, 1440, triple Ooh. cork. Uncharacteristic bobble at the end there. Love that cab over two. Of course, we can't say it enough. Last season was battling cancer. Didn't compete in anything until the end of the year at X Games Norway 2019. What did he do there? Won gold in his first contest back in Big Air. Then won gold at X Games Aspen. He's been on an absolute tear. Back to back. So Sven Torgren, our current leader, here in the middle of run number two at the Monster Energy Men's Snowboard Slope Style Final. Now, it's very interesting to see how the riders have understood this overall impression. It's really coming to fruition now especially on this slope style course because we've seen the entirety of the field change up their runs completely from run one. This format has been great across the board, but it really is showcased, as you said, in slope style. Absolutely. Sven, completely different runs. Switch back 10 on that first jump. Pardon me, backside 1080, I believe, into a front side 1080 double court. The Svenny's gotta love that. More of the same from Torgren. And what I mean by that is just more dominance because this really was a different run from what we saw on first attempt. Absolutely. I love how he went up and over the hitching post of the down bar first snowboarder. We've seen do that in this slope style final. The only thing I would take away is the jumps were a little bit mellow for Sven. He did back 10 into a front 10. Very hard, very difficult, don't get me wrong. But the level that we've seen thus far, you need 1260s, you need 1620s. Mons Roisland sitting right behind him in second place with under 16 minutes to ride with here in the final. I have to make this point, Brandon. These guys are good. Conditions? Incredible analysis, thank you. Absolutely subpar. It's raining sideways. The snow is bumpy. It's hard to make it down the run. And these guys are still putting right. down full pulls like it's sunny and soft. As you said, these are the best riders in the world. It would be forgiven I given their good. circumstances. I said they're good. <laughs> if they weren't riding up to par, but they're absolutely out kicking the coverage, these conditions are not standing in their way at all across the board. Absolutely. Oh, it kind of saves it, but that'll definitely be noted as a fall to the judges on that first of two jumps. Still goes front 10 double on the last one. Love that Miller flip on that rail. Is that a canary yellow or I, I, I think that's more taxi cab yellow. That's taxi yellow. Bumblebee. Well, Mark McMorris now sitting in fourth place. One big air gold yesterday to give him 19 X Games medals. There is no one above him on the winter athlete side. You're watching a goat out on the course. Solid in run one. Got to the bottom, no mistakes. Very difficult, ducks under the hitching post, switch. So he goes switch front blunt 270. Big cab over 180 in the backside 270. Tech game to the max. Teased it up on that rail, the judges wanna see that. Back 10, I didn't think he had enough mustard to put it down, but I'm mistaken. Front triple, yes. He started that rotation slower than molasses. I was watching paint dry on the takeoff for a second. I thought he wasn't gonna bring that around. He says, no, I painted your house. Here's a front triple. Gets that 10 and then look at this. Starts so slow. I thought Knuckle was gonna say hi. He says, no, I'm gonna give it a Knuckle sandwich. Hold that knee in tight and Mark McMorris just having a dream. X Games Norway. 
as he's picture perfect across the board. Doesn't matter if it's big air or it's a slope style course. Mark McMore is having no trouble out here at Hofiel on his way to first place. Now Darcy Sharp needs a full pool here as he's sitting in eighth. We talk about that overall impression. Sure, a banger run would be helpful, but when you've already got one that you didn't complete, you've got to get your feet back under you. That's how you start it. Backside 360 onto that down rail right at the top. Very technical. Cab over two, pulls it back, but has to fight for that. Good tenacity on that one. Here's where he went down. So instead of going 1080 off the toes on that jump, he sticks to the 900, but unable to ride away. Never count him out, though. In Aspen, didn't have all the full pulls, you know, had a couple falls, but was able to climb atop that number one spot with the runs he was doing at the end. Great point. Darcy Sharp still unable to put down that clean run. Given the timing, he'll probably get a couple more attempts here but certainly has some ground to cover. As we're two runs into our Monster Energy men's snowboard slope style final, and it's Mark McMorris in the lead. Sven Torgren and Mons Roisland rounding out our top three here at Hofjell. More from X Games Norway after this.
Welcome back to X Games Norway. We're in the midst of the Monster Energy Men's Snowboard Slope Style Final. Last night, Knuckle Huck went down and uh, one of the most fun athletes in our world, Fridge Tischendorf, he wasn't able to win gold, but he lets us in his world here in this feature. Check it out. My name is Fritjof Sæter Tischnorf, uh, also known as Fridge, and I'm from Chicken Falls, Norway. The origin behind the uh, knuckle huck, I guess, is just riding with your friends, pumping each other up, like who can go bigger, who can do the best trick of this like little knuckle or of the side of a cat track or a side hit and uh, any slope. It's like something that works everywhere and you're just like pushing each other constantly and it evolved into this. I really like knuckle hug because I get the vibe of snowboarding when you're doing it and when you're watching it. It's a show. It's just as fun for the riders as for the people watching it. Knuckle Huck is so good, especially when it's shot on iPhone like that. I agree. Have you ever been to Chicken Falls? Can't the way? say that I have. That is on my to-do list. Let's take a look at our top three thus far, though, here in the Monster Energy Men's Snowboard Slope Style Final. Max Perot, Mons Roisland, you saw some footage of them, and Sven Thorgren currently sitting in that second position with a backside 1440 to the very, very bottom, but they're all chasing the young Canadian, Mark McMorris. We are two runs in here with two runs to go in our Monster Energy Men's Snowboard Slope Style Final. We get ready for run number three. And remember, in this format, it's all about that body of work. And we've seen different approaches here. Do you go for the banger run right away, or do you try to climb that ladder? So far, Mark McMorris has been successful with that ladder climb as he sits in first place. That ladder climb that you mentioned, I love that term because it's overall impression. Your entire body of work. You have to land two, three runs, where in the past it was best run counts. Very, very different. I'm liking it, especially on the slope style event, because we're seeing athletes like Staley Sandbeck here doing completely different rail runs than we've seen in runs one and two. How about that? That double backside seven, double front flip. I have yet to really hone in on the name of that, but I like it. And I like that front side 1440. I know Staley Sandbeck will, and the Norwegian Faithful will. Here's a great look at it. Such an interesting dip on both those flips. Stale, one of three Norwegian riders competing here in this slope style final. Certainly has a loud cheering section. But right now, he's just trying to jump up out of seventh place. We turn our attention now to Rene Renekongas. He's got a silver medal in this event that he earned back in 2019 and he's currently in sixth. Well, backside Miller flip. It's already switching things up on that first rail. It just goes to what we said, overall impression. You gotta do something different every single time. And somebody who's good at that is Rene Redekongas. Craig, no one hits more features, no one gets more tricks in in this field than Rene Redekongas. And switching up his quarter pipe trick too as well. So yeah, he's hitting the same features. He hit the quarter pipe already, but does a completely different trick. Backside 1260 on jump number one. Was going cab 14 in the big air. Goes cab 14 oh. in slope style. That's called a kickback. Puts his la landing gear down, but the knuckle, or pardon me, the landing just kicks back. Board slide same way on that big down bar. Backside 12 to set up his cab rotation on jump two. Just doesn't put that cab 1440 down. 
And the riders have to be feeling a little bit of an elevated vibe to the contest now as we're halfway through. They're really starting to get a read here on what the judges are looking for. Marcus Cleveland, who's healthy and talented and ready for this course is currently in seventh place. Obviously, winning Knucklehuck last night was great, but we fully anticipate a podium finish from Marcus Cleveland, but he's got to put something big down right now, Craig. I mean, you look at that podium, Mark McMorris, Sven Thorgren, and Stolle Sandbeck, who just moved into third from his previous run. That's going to be tough to crack, but that backside 720 over that down bar on the first rail, nobody, nobody can do that. Marcus Cleveland possesses the ability to do tricks that nobody else can do. That backside 1440 on the final jump. In practice, he was putting an indie grab into that. That one, a little bit safer with the mute grab, but gets one very, very solid. And if the cheering section gets a little louder for Marcus Cleveland, that's because his family lives just about a two-hour drive here from Hafiel Resort. He is a household name. He's certainly one of the best snowboarders on the planet and he puts down a great run here on his third attempt. Now, Max Perot, Brandon, we have seen him do groundbreaking tricks, groundbreaking performances, but so far today, great first run. That second run, though, a little uncharacteristic bobble at the end. He's so automatic, and Marcus Cleveland, you see jumping up in the sixth. It's just strange to see him not land at all, let alone perhaps a couple of times in this contest. He needs a full pool right now because he's sitting in fifth place. Cab double 12 fell on that practice a couple times hard. Makes no mistake in the big show, though. Back triple 1440. There you go. Grabs Melon on it, too. So we just saw Marcus Cleveland, the young Norwegian, do that with the mute grab, with the Melon grab a little bit more difficult. Definitely be rewarded. There's that front blunt 450. He struggled with a little bit in that last run. Gets it all the way around in run three here. So Max Perot, he's excited, like I, I am. I think he should be. The judges have to love that. Max Perot will certainly jump up out of that fifth position. That's the best run we've seen from Max here today. And now dropping, currently in second place, Sven Torgren. And, and look then, at that. Excuse wow. me, sitting in third place, Sven Torgren, because Max Perot jumped all the way up in his silver medal position. Gotta love that real time updates. That's the beauty of the live rankings. No scored runs. You're seeing exactly what the judges are thinking after every single run. And Sven Torgren has had two completely different runs, and they've both been podium level. What can he do here on his third attempt? Double backside rodeo. Good save. Land a little 90 there, but whipped it around. Uh, but you can see just lacking a little bit of speed into that second jump. So he took off cab, and I was thinking cab 12, maybe cab 14, but has to hold it at cab 1080. This is gnarly, though. Cab 270 in, 270 out on that flat bar that extends over, and that is about a 12-foot drop. If you come off that thing early, bye-bye uh, knees. Sven trying to add to his six X Games medals. He's clinging to that bronze medal spot, but there are some of the best in the world chasing him on the outside looking in that still have to drop. It's gonna be interesting. Do they put Sven Thorgren ahead of Max Perot? Sven has more runs landed. Max Perot, however, has one very gnarly run landed. It's not our decision to make, Craig. No. Here's Mons Roisland sitting in fifth place. You can see that washboard after that second rail raining extremely hard and the snow is very soft so when you break it creates that washboard effect that i just mentioned and you can see the riders bouncing a little bit when they exit a rail yeah as you can see some rain gray skies the wind has been blowing less than ideal conditions but you wouldn't think it watching these eight riders putting it down here today at x games norway switch backside 1260 on jump one taxi cab yellow Show up for Norway. Wow. Ooh. 
The core strength just shown by Mons Roisland is something to be envious of. He started that front triple, missed the grab. The amount of G-force on your body to hold your knees up in that situation is crazy. So the fact that he whipped that around with not even getting the grab is very admirable. He's a core guy. He's a core, you gotta do it every day. In your hotel room, no excuses. It's boring, but it's Small part of our life. life. <laughs> what does Mark McMorris do here? Perfect through two runs. He is our current leader. He is now officially the GOAT, the winningest winter athlete in X Games history with 19 medals. How does he potentially shut the door, lock the door to the rest of the field? Oh, a little not a spin right there. The fact that he's doing so well today is absolutely mind-boggling because I was almost late for this broadcast. You want to know why? Mark's boot had a little bit of rip in it. I wear the exact same boots. I had to run down to that final jump. We switch boots. So he's wearing my boots that I was riding in this morning. That's wild. And you guys have the same size boot? Yeah, well, he's 11. I'm 10 and a half. I knew that. You knew that. And it just does not seem to be affecting him whatsoever. Back 12 double, switch, back 12 double. Maybe you should wear your boots more often, Craig. It's the boots. You're welcome, Sparky. You're welcome. No, but that story actually says so much. As a competitor, you hate to mess with your routine. Something like that happens. Oh, we're having an issue with your boot. He puts on your boots literally right before practice and it, is it, able to do what he's doing right now, leading this contest. Absolutely wild. We do wear the exact kind of boot that burned SLX, which he is very used to. That's actually a new boot for me, so thank gosh I brought those to Norway. So more of the same from Mark McMorris. It's tough to do better than first place. Yeah. That's where he stays. Darcy Sharp, though, our defending gold medalist from X Games Aspen, just hasn't been his day thus far. Does his luck change here on run three? He is so good at switching up his run. He's done three different runs. The hardest part about this for Darcy, though, is those first two have not been landed. Wow! From the outside, from the top rope, into that front blend, and ooh, as I mentioned, that out rail is so gnarly if you come off early. Darcy Sharp saves it there. Cab 180, backside 360 in. and that front side 1080 double. That, that first of two jumps has just kind of been playing with Darcy. He fell on the front 10 off the toes, the front nine off the toes, and then that front side double 10 off the heels, giving him a little trouble here. Highlight for me on the rail section right here. Up, into that front blunt, locks it perfect. You can't do it better than that. That's video game. We've looked into it. Don't fact check us. Don't fact check us. Can't do it better than what Darcy did right there on that spider rail. So run three officially in the books as we close in on the two minute warning, which means each of these riders will get one more attempt here on the slope style course. It's fourth and final run time here in the Monster Energy Men's Snowboard Slope Style Final. Mark McMorris in first, Max Perot right behind him in second. You wouldn't expect anything less. Perhaps the greatest rivalry in snowboarding, those two, they're one and two here on final runs. But kicking things off for these fourth attempts, Stale Sambek. Currently sitting in that fourth place position, had held the third place position until Sven Thorgren put down his run and bumped him just off the podium. Beautiful backside 180 on that spider rail. And then goes back lip to Fakey on the down bar. So coming into this jump switch here. Whips the cab 1260 around. Backside 1440, shots fired from Stole Sandbeck. Stole the showman. Just like he starts, he ends. That was a great first run and probably saved his best for last here on his final attempt. Absolutely. I believe this puts him on the podium ahead of Sven. Simply 
through execution. He does everything so well. That cap 1260 lands, bolts. This backside 1440, bolts. Certainly Mark and Max have, have somewhat Ooh. separated themselves from the field. But to your point, that felt like at least the third best overall body of work we've seen thus far here today. Oh, and there's a little high five from the niece. I'll put a smile on your face. And you called it, partner. Stale Sonbeck jumps up into podium position. Now he's got to cross those fingers and play the waiting game because there's seven other riders still to drop in. But here's Rene Renacongas. He's currently in seventh place. We said it once, we're gonna say it a million times. He hits every, he touches so much steel Perfect. on here. Yeah, he's smelting it out here. See, literally touched it. Most people are sliding it, backside. <laughs> 360 hand touch right there. He's just a machine. Competes in nearly every discipline. Films, ATV. on magazine covers. He truly is an all-terrain vehicle when it comes to snowboarding. Beautiful front side invert. We saw him do that alley backside rodeo last time. Executes the front side invert so well. Ooh, but misses the takeoff on that cab rotation, has to settle for a cab nine, no grab. And goes backside 1260, so a big miss on the first of two jumps, and he knows it. But a great showing here. Rene Renacongas, as we said, a silver medal in slope style back in 2019. Trying to get back on the X Games podium for the first time since then. Unfortunately, it will not be today here at X Games Norway as he's just unable to fulfill this run. So good up top, but just that first of two jumps. When you don't get your pop, you just don't get your trick. Thank you. Thank you, Rene. So gracious. But he does jump up a spot. Does he at least potentially bump down Marcus Cleveland? who is in seventh place, which is crazy because his first run was so good, Craig. So well done, but as the contest has moved on, he hasn't kept up to the pace of maybe uh, Perot, Sandbeck, or McMorris. A little bit mellower on that first rail. He's doing that backside 720 over, sticks to the backside 360. Already a gold medal here at this X Games Norway, which he earned a knuckle huck last night. And the fact that he's riding in the slope style right. event, I mean, we can't stress it enough. Ooh, that switch backside 1080 just gets uncorked for him there. Shattered kneecap, a shattered kneecap. Back in December of 2018, so really two years removed from that, not even. Think that, about that. That is one of the injuries that takes so much time. And to be putting your knee through the forces that are required to compete in a slope style event, you need to be 110%. Gets stuck a little bit upside down on that final cork of the switch backside 1080, and that'll do it for Marcus Cleveland. All right, we turn our attention now to Max Perot. He's sitting right behind Mark McMorris. What can Max do on what will be his final run to potentially steal the top spot away from Mark? He's already got that cab 16 triple. He's got that back 1440 triple. Oh, wow. Sends a Wildcat off that pole jam. Pole jam. Into the backside 360. And then the back lip to Fakie there. So solid throughout the rails. Cap 12 all the way down. Sets him up regular. He's already got that backside. He's going front side. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Holy! The gauntlet has been dropped, my friend. Wow, okay. That front triple was done so, so well. Cap 12 kind of scared himself. Didn't think he was going to be going that big, but... Actually scared me. I was terrified. Front side triple 1440. Watch this landing. Did it make a noise? 
It's the sound of silence. This is what Paul Simon and Art Garfunkel were talking about. We have a new leader, Max Perot, taking over the top spot. Whoa. Now, certainly, Mark McMorris has been in this position before, having to come from behind, but we'll wait because there's still a couple riders that have to drop in before Mark does, including this guy, Sven Torgren, who was leading this contest early and is now on the outside looking in. What can Sven do to jump back into podium position? That's a great question. Thanks. Double backside rodeo. Didn't get the rotation on that last 180. That makes it a 900. As good as he probably can do. I love the way he goes over, up and over that hitching post and the 270 on high risk maneuver onto that out rail. Front side over 270. Can he put it down here? So he goes backside 1080 and he does have a front triple. I think he needs it. So he does go for that front side triple 1440, gets the rotation, but lands a little bit back foot heavy. In my opinion, he puts that down. He takes that third position away from Stale Sandbeck, but Sandbeck can breathe a sigh of relief. Because with this fall here, no way he can touch Sandbeck, in my opinion. Gets it going, finishes the rotation, but puts the landing gear down and too much weight. Life was looking good. It he was. had the red bottoms on. Thought he was going to complete that run and possibly knock off Stale for third. But we move on. Mons Roisland, he's sitting in fifth. Now he's got a couple nice runs, but also a one run that didn't complete. So a full pool here would definitely help him. A hammer full pool could certainly make some noise and get him on that podium. This is very reminiscent of men's big air. It was Mark and Max battling it out, going back and forth, back and forth. Does Mons throw his name in that conversation with this fourth and final run? Board slide pretzel. Doesn't really get that switch up as good as he did last time. Nor the down flat down. You can see the landing a little bit sketchy, losing a lot of speed. Coming off a little bit early. Switch back 12, fights it around, but very, very solid landing. Oh. Going for that double 1440. So unlike Sven, Mark, and Max who do that triple court 1440, Mons keeps it at a double. Gets a lot more rotation than flip in it, but just does not get the airtime needed to put it down. Let's turn our attention now to Mark McMorris, who will be the next rider to drop in. First place was just taken from him by Max Perot. Now, Mark is guaranteed a medal. That we do know, the 20th of his X Games career. However, this is his event. He's won it five times before. He did not come to X Games Norway for silver. He's new boot goofing out here. He's got my boots and he's goofing in them. He's my boot goofing, if you will. Switch front blood, same way. What's his chest move against Perot here on his final run? He has yet to do a backside 16. If I was Mark McMorris, I would maybe go... Oh, so he goes backside on this. Is he going to go cab 12 or switch back 16? Get going! Oh, oh no! So Mark McMorris throws a dart, but just not in the bullseye, just outside. That switch back 1620. Now I have to illustrate this point. It is pouring rain. The takeoffs are mashed potatoes. The fact that he even gets that much pop is impressive but you need so much air time to bring that thing around. And there you see the embrace of the two that have had some classic battles over the better part of a decade. And it looks like Max Perot will best his buddy 
here today, but we do have one last rider to drop in. Darcy Sharp, a gold medal at X Games Aspen, just has had a tough go of it here, though, at Hoffield today. That first of two jumps, he's been so solid throughout. Rail game on point. Watch this, backside three in. Every single time. Front blunt to Fakie. Comes under. Little back blunt bring back from Darcy Sharp. But you could never count him out, you know? Maybe right now as he's fallen on three of those four runs, but throughout the entirety of this event, just because he'd fallen doesn't mean you could really count him out. We saw an Aspen. Right. Couple falls, came back, wins the whole thing on his last run. Big backside 360 from Darcy Sharp to cap things off, but wow, what an event, Brando. Max Perot was trying to make it three in a row in snowboard big air, and Mark McMorris bested him yesterday. Now Mark McMorris trying to win a sixth slope style gold in his X Games career, and Max Perot takes the top spot here today. Wow. Every single run, they jumped one, two, one, two, in big air and in slope style. Any day, it could be anyone's. Between and Mark it's and Max. official Max Perot earning his second slope style gold, his 13th X Games medal. Max, your eighth X Games gold medal. Last night you got a silver medal. Would you say that played a catalyst into today? Uh, I was definitely focused to do on a good result today. And uh, I'm actually really happy because the last time I won gold in slope style was in 2014. So it's been a while. So it uh, feels good to taste gold again in slope style X Games. <laughs> Why do you think that gap has happened? Um, has it just been harder for you to win slope style? Um, no, I mean, um, it's a different challenge than Big Air. Uh, I've done well at other contests. Uh, X Games was just not going well for me, but uh, here it is. <laughs> there it is, and I think just watching you ride, it looked like you really wanted it more than anybody, so congratulations on your second Slope Style Gold and eighth X Games Gold medal. No big deal, Max Sans Perot. Wow, Max Perot. As you heard him say, first time on top in slope style in six years. Also earning a silver in big air last night. So he walks home with two medals for the weekend here at X Games Norway, as does Mark McMorris, who won gold in big air and silver here today. And how about Stale Sandback, the Norwegian, getting on the slope style podium for the first time since 2017. Big bronze for Stale Sandback, but Mark McMorris and Max Perot went blow for blow here in slope style. Congratulations to Max Perot winning the Monster Energy Men's Snowboard Slope Style Final.